Meantime, in the United States, President Joe Biden has criticized Israel for the way that it is conducting its military campaign in Gaza. His remarks followed a warning from U.S. officials over Israeli plans to move the ground offensive into the southern city of Rafah. Israel's prime minister says that it is a stronghold for Hamas, which carried out the October 7th terror attacks. Another family left grieving after five relatives were killed by Israeli airstrikes. Lana Almashuke lost both her parents. We were sleeping and we suddenly woke up to the sound of bombing. Rocks were above our heads and a fire had started. At the end, I was calling for my mother, father and my siblings and they didn't answer me. The southern city of Rafa is home to over a million displaced people who fled to the border town seeking safety. People say they are living in fear of a promised Israeli advance. We don't know where to go. They told us that Rafa is a safe area for displaced people, and we were displaced to Rafa after being told to leave Har Yunis. So the situation scares me. Do we have to go home? Our destroyed houses. We have no other choices. We are just waiting to die. We are waiting for the moment of our execution. U.S. National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby said a military operation in Rafah would be a disaster and that the U.S. would not support it. President Joe Biden also gave his strongest warning yet. I'm of the view, as you know, that the conduct of the response in, Gaza, in the Gaza Strip has been um, over the top. I talked to Bibi to open the gate on the Israeli side. I've been pushing really hard, really hard, to get humanitarian assistance into Gaza. There are a lot of innocent people who are starving, a lot of innocent people who are in trouble and dying, and it's got to stop. Streets close to Rafa's Q8 hospital have been left in ruins. And after Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told troops to prepare for operations in the city, the few safe areas left in Gaza are now also under threat. And let's get some context now with Frank Ledvich. He is a senior lecturer in strategic studies at Portsmouth University and a former British military intelligence officer. He joins us from Oxford. Uh, Frank, welcome to, back to the program. We've heard criticism coming from the U.S. regarding reports that Israel plans to expand its offensive to Rafah. An operation has not started. Do we have a sense of what might be being considered here? Is it likely to be a wide-scale assault or something different? Well, good morning, Sarah. I think it's important to realise that the Israeli army that went into the Gaza four months ago is not the Israeli army or defence forces that we see today. They've learned a very great deal. So no longer do we see the frankly indiscriminate or apparently indiscriminate airstrikes on a large scale. Instead, what we see is a focus on ground operations. And indeed, there's good evidence now of subterranean operations. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, look, whether the Americans like it or not, and there has, by the way, been quite a lot of the tail wagging the dog with respect to the US and this operation in writ large. But uh, look, the Israelis are going to do this anyway. They have to uh, proceed and clear, as they see it, the entire area. They will be entering Rafa, as uh, the, their prime minister has said. Uh, we can only hope that the targeting procedures and the rules of engagement that the Israelis are uh, as we speak, developing for Rafa, will uh, will reduce unnecessary civilian casualties. This is going to happen, whatever the Americans say. Meantime, Israeli officials are saying that Hamas militants have begun reappearing in the northern Gaza Strip. Um, what does this say about Israel's ability to achieve its war goal of wiping out the group, also in central parts around Khan Yunus, for example, where fighting continues? Yes, very interestingly, recently, the reports that the uh, that U.S. intelligence officials take the view that uh, 
the Israelis are nowhere near achieving their objectives of eliminating Hamas. And this, uh, this, uh, these actions in Gaza City are evidence of that. And they're quite interesting, Sarah, as to how they're happening. What the Israelis think is that uh, a lot of terrorists, are, or terrorists that are engaging them there, are in fact entering or re-entering the city through tunnels that they haven't yet found, which brings back this key element, which still comes back and back and back. And the Israelis have not yet conquered it, this problem of the tunnels. So that's the first thing. The second thing on a more strategic level is the Israelis must be thinking now, we, look, we're getting back to the old ways of what they call mowing the grass. In other words, we simply can't eliminate the problem. It will continue to grow and we're going to have to deal with it as time goes on. This war is nowhere near finished and that they're going to have to be conducting these actions for many months yet. I'd like to get you to respond also to these reports uh, saying that the Israeli army is trying to create a so-called buffer zone by destroying buildings in Gaza. The UN human, human rights uh, chief says that that would potentially violate international laws of war. How do you see such operations from a military perspective, strategically speaking? Well, what the Israelis obviously are trying to create there is a, a cordon sanitaire around the the main core of the uh, of, of the strip. I think it's two kilometres they want, uh, which would be that from their perspective, uh, a security zone would be I would expect mined and patrolled by Israelis. So there is a mi military role then, and the question is, of course, in international law, uh, is that an adequate reason for breaching the? Uh, very clear rule against such things in international humanitarian law. That's a trade-off. The Israelis' judgment will be, of course it is. It's a, we're justified by the military necessity that we consider uh, is imposed upon us. I think most people would say that they could impose such a zone a cordon outside the borders of Gaza should they wish to do so. But of course, that would deny them uh, land uh, on their side. So this is a political question. There is a military requirement for it. The question is on which side of the border should it be uh, imposed. Frank Ledvich, Senior Lecturer in Strategic Studies at Portsmouth University. Many thanks. Thank you, Sarah.